What if I told you that you could actually repair all your domestic appliances using nothing but a continuity test with a multimeter? If you want to find out more? Stay tuned. Roll the intro. Hey, name Tax, and welcome back. This is Ash from Hilmai Tech, helping you go from movie to tech. So I'm here today with my good friend Alvin, whom I met at the Restart Project a few months ago. These guys are a community-based project and what they do, they actually encourage and help people to repair their electronics and uh, domestic appliances for free. There are some conditions, I'm going to put a link in the description below so you guys can check them out. My name's Alvin, I'm 73 years old now, retired. Um, I'm an ex-electronics engineer, I started in um, in the east end of London, a small retail company called Globe Radio at Canning Town. And we used to repair everything from um, tooth electric toothbrushes to multi-screen televisions, all sorts of things. Um, I later developed onto um, working for Curry's, which was then purchased by Dixon's and become the, the Dixon's Stores Group and I worked there for 22 years till I retired. I ended up um, as an engineering supervisor for the um, southeast of England. We, we covered virtually uh, the whole of East Anglia and Sussex and right down to Hastings, right the way down there. I've been involved in electronics since I was 15 years old. Um, well, once you're an engineer, you're always an engineer. I uh, volunteered for the, the Restart project, project where I met Ash and quite a few other people. Um, it's um, an environment where, where you meet people with, with objects that, that they can't get repair or frustrated to, to try and get them repair because the small man in the corner shop that used to do the repairs, they're all gone. There, are, there aren't anyone left now. Uh, hobby wise I, um, I'm a radio ham and I play radio a lot. So it's not like a, a domestic TV. With ham radio you contact people all over the world. There's all different formats. I'm very much interested in the TV side. Uh, there's fast scan TV and another thing called slow scan TV which is more digitised. The manufacturer has um, no redress to do a repair. The retailer has the redress to do the repair. The person you purchased it from is responsible for the repair, not the manufacturer. When uh, they buy the product from the manufacturer, they take on the responsibility of the warranty. If you buy external warranties we, let, let's talk about Dixon's because uh, and Curry's if you bought a policy from Curry's or Dixon's but they are not the manufacturer they are the retailer they have a service organization and we used to do the repairs ourselves if you buy a thing from Tesco's Sainsbury's they have no service backup no service organization but they subcontract it out to companies that do warranty repairs and they subcontract that out for them to do the repairs. The um, LCDs on their own are very, very expensive. I would think an individual LCD uh, to purchase is greater than the price, retail price of a TV. When you, you are producing when you're manufacturing products, your buying power is great. You don't want one screen, you might want 500,000 screens. And in the big retail world, if you want to buy 500,000 of a product, they will get it down to a price. Whereas if you want to buy one, that price it, you know, is not negotiable. It's, it's the same sort of principle with domestic stuff. Like carrots, peas, and that. the more you buy, the cheaper you get it. But also you must take into consideration with repairs, 
you have a labour cost as well. I mean, some firms charge £100 an hour, £150 an hour, if you can find someone to do it. It's the same as motor cars. The, the, the labour costs are exorbitant. But retail prices for component parts, if you look around, you will find um, there are people now that do... Um, Regun, like they used to do the old regun tubes, they now do regun LCD panels. Um, it's rare that the actual LCD goes wrong, it's usually the backlight, where, and that could either be a fluorescent backlight or an LCD backlight. I think today people are more of a throwaway society. If you look at PCs, phones and things like that, I think with when I first started, the television had three months warranty. That was your warranty, three months. Now um, they give you 12 months, two years. I would think the average product lasts at least 10 years. I, I would think I would think 10 years is the, about the average life of a modern product. Some of the cheaper ones, so you buying it for a cheap price, and I think with the electronic field, you only get what you pay for. The capacitor theory is um, a lot of failure with modern products is the mundane electrolytic capacitor. I mean, we see hundreds of, of, of products fail because the electrolytic capacitors fail. But they could put um, much better quality capacitors in the original product. But then that will affect the retail price. Nearly everything in the electronic industry and probably in, in most fields is all on retail price. The cheaper it is, the more they sell. And a man in the street is looking for a bargain. He wants to pay less and less and less. Um, one of the, it's not so much built in obsolescence, but I think it will increase failure rate, is the LED backlights. Now the LED backlights on a lot of the sets are 3.7 volts. Now they are driven at 5 volts. Gives you a much brighter picture. Again, with normal use, um, not having it on 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, it depends how often you use it. I would say that should or would last 4 to 5 years. After 4 to 5 years, those LEDs fail. If they've got thousands and thousands of pounds to spend on electronic products, then buy a reputable make, a reputable brand from a reputable retailer where they would get the necessary backup and they get the durability. You can't expect a Fiat motor car to last as long as a Rolls Royce, but they're in total different price brackets. Well, yeah, I mean, in, especially in electronics, the same with computers and telephones and, and mobile phones, you only get what you pay for. You pay £10 for a phone, don't expect it to do what a £500 phone does. It ain't going to happen. We stopped training apprentices probably in the 80s. Um, up to that time, we used to train electronic apprentice, radio, TV engineer apprentices, but that all stopped. Basic electronics would probably come under science, and I would think they do that. They 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 explain how electrons work and continuity, electric flow. That would be basic science. You can't expect youngsters to be playing about with high voltage televisions, that's too dangerous. But there's nothing to stop them 
doing nine volt battery radios it's all the same sort of theory once you've got that basic electronics you just apply it to whatever product you're repairing the theory is exactly the same for a small radio as for a plasma tv the electronics and theory is exactly the same I will qualify that statement in to say um, with domestic appliances, yes. But when you're looking at complex faults with televisions, like video faults and things like that, then you need something more than, than a multimeter. But I would say, certainly, I would rubber stamp 90% of domestic appliances you can repair with a multimeter. I mean, certainly irons, toasters, electric drills, all the mundane things without a shadow of a doubt. Once you get into screens where you've got video, signal processing, then that's a different matter. Right. Yes, I, I, I feel the, the field is vast, but the youngsters today are computer driven. Um, my, my son is a uh, into computers in a big way and he sets things up that I do even with my radio dad you can get on the internet and do this it's not the same but it's a wonderful hobby and it's unfortunate but the same with with the British industry it, we, we haven't got plumbers we haven't got plasterers we haven't got electricians we haven't got them basic skills anymore everyone wants to go and do it with a PC and a computer doesn't work like that. So we've got to hurry up because I haven't got long. <laughs> <laughs> so as a test of his claim, I asked Alvin to troubleshoot this steam iron from Bosch, which was blowing up the mains fuse every time it was being used. Lo and behold, he was able to figure it out very quickly. And yes, by only using the continuity test with a multimeter. I will show you how he did that in the next video. If you want to get in touch with Alvin, details are below in the description. That's all for today folks. Thank you for staying till the end. This was my first interview ever so I would love some feedback as I do also have some criticism of my own. Leave me a comment below and drop me a like or dislike. Remember to share this vid with others and also consider subscribing if you found the content and channel beneficial. As always, it was a pleasure. This was Ash from Hill My Tech, helping you go from newbie to techie. Until next time, peace out.